Hello everybody and welcome, this is Roland Hartman from Graphic in Motion and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can customize my Plexus Abstract Opener template. Before we get started with the customization I just want to point out that in the template folder uh, you will find two different versions of this template. The first version is the no plugins version and as the name says it needs no extra third-party plugins and the second version is the plugins version and this version will need the Plexus plugin and the Optical Flares plugin. So depending on how you want to customize and change the template you can choose which version you want to use. In this customization I will use the plugins version. The only difference between the plugins and the no plugins version basically is that in the no plugins version the abstract shapes here are pre-rendered and the flares are pre-rendered too. So you won't be able to change the shape or the distortion of uh, these plexus elements and you won't be able to change the look of the flare. But if you do not need this then the no plugins version is perfect for you. Before we get started inside After Effects, I just want to point out that if you want to use the same font that I used in the preview and that is currently set up in this template, please be sure that you have the Nexa font installed on your system. Actually, you need two different versions. You need the Nexa Lite version and you need the Nexa Bold version. You can download both versions free. I put a link inside the links folder. So in the project folder that you downloaded from VideoHive, you will find the links folder. And inside this folder, you can find the Nexa free font link. So please download the fonts, install them on your system, and then open up your project. If you open up your project and you do not see the abstract shapes here, then please just check your Plexus shape layer. You see it's called the blue one here, Plexus Shapes. And you see we have five different shapes in here. And if you do not see them, you probably just have to re-import the OBJ file. So therefore you just click on the Import OBJ. And now you just click on the Open tab here. And then you move to the folder where you downloaded and unzipped the template. And inside this folder, you can find the Footage folder and here is an OVJ folder, and then you have the band shape 1, shape 2, shape 3, shape 4, and shape 5, and accordingly to the number, you can just re-import the shape, and then it should be visible. Okay, now you should be good to go and start with the customization. First of all, I want to show you how you can change the titles. This is very easy. You can just enter the title compositions. They should be already open in the timeline, but if not, you can find them in the project area or in the project window in the titles placeholder folder. And you can also find them inside the setup and render composition. And you just double click on the layer and then you enter the title composition. And you see in the title composition, we have only two text layers. This is the main title and then we have this small uh, additional title here. And you can just select your text tool and then start customizing, typing in your titles and changing the look, uh, whatever you want. Change the font, change the weight, the size, whatever you want to do. So I will just leave the title for now as it is because I think it's really easy. So if we take a look at title number two, you see that on each of these titles is a marker. And this marker just shows you after which time you should uh, customize the title. It makes no sense to customize the title before this marker because the build-up animation is not finished yet. Just move your time indicator behind the marker and you see the same in title three and the same in title four. So be sure to just have your time indicator on the right position and then you can easily customize your text. Now let's take a look at the final scene. In the preview video you see that there is a final title and it says your logo and it has some kind of a tagline. And if we take a look at the layers here you see that we have a final title layer and we have also a logo and a logo tagline layer. So it's up to you whether you use a text for as a final image or title or whether you import your logo. So if you want to use text you just can open up the final title and you see again we have 
two text layers, the main title and the tagline, and you can put in whatever you want. And if you want to use the logo, then please just disable the final title layer and enable the logo and the logo tagline. And then you just have to import your logo. And that's also very simple. So we just move to the logo composition by double clicking it. And you see that my logo is here as a placeholder. And now you can go to file and go to import. You cannot see it because now it's outside of the recording area, but go to import and then choose file, and then import your logo and then just drag it on top of the placeholder and position and scale it to approximate the same size. And now we can go back to the render composition and take a look at our final scene. And you see that the logo is white. And this is because there is a fill effect on my logo layer. So if you do not want this to be white, it's only a, a decision of design, you know, because all the titles are white. So I thought, okay, I will make the logo white. But if you do want the original colors of your logo to be displayed in the end, then you can easily just select the logo layer and just disable the fill effect by clicking on this FX button here. You could also delete it. And now you see that the color is a little bit influenced of our color correction. So if you want really or need really original colors, then I recommend that you just select the logo layer and just drag it above the color correction layer. And now you see I have exactly the original colors that my logo has. Then of course you have the possibility to enter your tagline. So you just can enter the logo tagline composition. And here you see we have the logo and this is only a guide layer that helps you position your tagline. Now you can again just select the text here and start customizing your tagline. Okay, so let's say I want to change the look of my animation and I also want to use the white version because I kind of like it and I will just drag it down here again. And now we can deal with the look of our elements here. So let's go to the first scene and let's take a look at the first uh, shape. To change the colors of the shapes, you can just use or just select the color setup layer on top of our setup and render composition. And you see immediately that we have a bunch of color controls here. And maybe if you start with changing the colors, it's, it's uh, better to just disable the color correction for a moment because you see the color correction changes the look quite a bit. So if you want to have full control about your look, then it's better to disable the color correction and then start with the color setup. And now you can start by changing the colors as you want. You can yeah, just select another color, maybe something like this, a little bit desaturated, looks quite cool, a little bit more blue. You can do this for every shape. You see we have four color controls for, or five color controls, I should say, for the five shapes. So this is shape number one. The shapes are always these um, plexus forms with the facets on it. So let's click through. We have shape number two. They look quite similar now. And shape number three, shape number four. And in the end, we have shape number five. So you can change all the colors using these five color controls. And if we take a closer look, I will just increase the resolution. You see that we have these small dots here and you can also change the color of these dots. You see that there is a color shape points color control. And if I change this, for example, to something like just dark gray, then you, know, you see that the points change their color. I'll just undo that because I like the red dots here. The same, we have color shape lines, so I could also make them red. And now all the lines change. And you see that this applies to all of the shapes, so you do not have to come in and change every point separately. So let's undo this again to get back to our original colors. And now I just will make this a little bit bigger. You see that we have a color plexus particle points. And the particle points, I will just search a frame where I can see them a bit better. So like so here, for example, you see that there are 
these small elements, the, they are floating around uh, through our scene and these have extra color controls. So you see that I just set them to a pretty dark green and a pretty dark or just black. So if you want to change these, you can also use these two color controls. I will just show you this. Let's take the, the same red color for now. And now you see that these small dots will change their color. Okay, so this is the setup of the colors of our shapes and elements. And now another important feature of this template is the background. So if we take a look at our setup and render composition, you see uh, down here there is a green layer called background and it says edit background colors on this layer. So if we take a look at this background layer, select it and take a look at our uh, effect controls panel, you see that there is a four color gradient effect on it. And I will zoom out now for a moment and I will just reduce the resolution a bit and I will just solo my background just to, to show you what's going on here. And you see that there are four different colors blended together and if I select my gradient effect you see that I have these handles uh, or these points here and I can drag them around and by dragging them around you can see what I do here. I can set up the look of my background. So here you can really determine the, the general feeling and look of your uh, scene. And you can make it darker or you can just reduce the saturation and just create your own look by changing the colors and of course also changing the position of these colors. Okay, so now the last step of our customization will be the color correction. Uh, I disabled it before and if I enable it now, you will see the effect. So it has a pretty strong effect because I wanted to just uh, give it a little bit more of a blue shine and a little bit more contrast. And yeah, that's basically what I did with this color correction. And you see that the color correction is only made with a simple curves effect. So if you take a look at the RGB curve, you see I just increased the highlights, just decreased the, the, the shadows a bit. And let's go through the colors. I didn't touch the reds and I just decreased the greens in the, in the dark areas a bit and increased them in the light areas a bit. And I just increased the overall blues a bit. So if you want to change this, you could just reset my color correction and start your own one, or you just can drag around the curves a bit to create your unique look. So last but not least, you can enter your audio track and there is already an audio composition. You can again go to file, import file and import your audio file and then just drag it into the audio composition. And if you want to use the same audio that I used for the preview video, I recommend you to use this link. Again, we are in the project folder in the links folder. You can find the link to audio jungle to the 3D ring minimal logo uh, audio track. Okay, so this is it. Um, I hope you like the animation and create some nice openers with this template. Thanks a lot for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.